Hello, hello, hello. We are back, finally. Had a few scheduling conflicts, but we're back. And it is exciting. One moment. Weird. Anyway, uh, just dropped a lot of frames. But yeah, we're, we're finally back. And time to unmute. All of it just kind of is. Hello. Sorry if Hello. I cut anything off. Hey, yo. Hello. Uh, Sol was just explaining something. Computer stuff. Yeah. I mean, feel free to finish the conversation if you'd like. Uh, that's fine. I was just saying that I haven't touched this computer since February, and thus I'm kind of like, wow, this is the state it was in. <laughs> I left this like this? <laughs> Basically, <laughs> because it's like, because then I think back on what, like, on my main one right now, I'm like, wow, yeah, it's like a lot has actually changed about it. <laughs> Damn, bitch, you live like this as if I'm not the one who left you in that condition. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, are we all ready to begin the session? Yes. Ready. All right. Yes. Uh, last time on Mind and Body, the party enjoyed some nice downtime, and uh, afterwards, I r remind me, it was after the downtime that we scried on Lucille's companions, correct? Yes. Alright, it's, it's just been two weeks, so I just need to make completely sure. Uh, so that happened, and as well, the party meant Vraxan, a dragon blood individual who was sent to assist who has given instructions that a strange creature which goes by Ivan may be able to help with information of these creatures the party faces. And that, uh, since you're going off on a mission, I will just say you have been provided with enough um, supplies for the trip there and back, plus some extra in case there's any delays, so you guys will not have to worry about rations unless there are too many problems throughout the adventure. Uh, well, I just need to find my music. thought I could do that fluidly, but now I need my full attention. <laughs> Uh, beyond that, I, um, sorry to spring this on you guys, but I actually whipped up some new travel rules that I think should make things go a lot more streamlined and make things a lot more fun. Oh. I, I will, uh, post them in the chat, but I will also explain them as I go. So, uh, the, the hexes will still take five days each to cross, however, instead of having a a kind of town somewhere in it nebulously and an encounter somewhere in it nebulously we have more concrete rules for how this works uh, at the beginning of each round of adventuring you will choose a speed you can either be careful normal speed or expedious um, basically careful speed it takes twice as long to travel a hex and you can and your die to try and travel the hexes is a d4. You roll that die, you go that many spaces. Normal travel time, it's normal, you roll a d6 to see how much you travel. And expeditious, you roll d8 and it takes half the time to make it through a hex. Um, however, there are also complications, which the size of the die to determine if there's a complication is determined by your travel speed. It is always going to be a result of one, except for in the terms of if one complication pops up, uh, and the complication die for careful travel is d8, for normal travel is d... that should be a d4. Need to change my notes there. Uh, and for expeditious travel, it is a d2. So, would we like to go into our first round of adventuring? Yes. Alright. 
everyone discuss and agree upon what your travel speed shall be. Honestly, um, I'd rather just go normal. Yeah, I mean, we we have we have people with us too, right? Uh, you have one individual, Vraxan, this like dragon blood Theros warrior. His brother, or no, he is a. He, Therostra is a deep elf. Uh, Vraxan is a dragon blood, so a dragon person, with kind of like black scales but freckles of white within them, and he's uh, yeah. He's decked out in armor with a shield and an axe. Well, I for one feel totally safe. It's totally secure with him, so I'm fine going at a careful, at a careful, or uh, careful at a normal pace. My God! All right. Uh, is that whole party consensus? Soul, Sergio. Uh, I'm fine with it. Uh, would the party like to roll the travel die, and I will roll the complication die? I'd like to roll. Can I be heard from here? Yes, you can. Um, you're kind of quiet. Yeah, my mic is on its stand as opposed to in my hand now. Ah. Mm. Which is farther away. Ooh. <laughs> Unfortunately. How about now? Uh, yeah, oh, we can yeah. hear you. Uh, unfortunately, we're already suffering a complication. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Alright. Uh, what is the result of the venture die? It was a d20, right? It is a d6 at normal pace. Oh, okay. Okay, D6. Six. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is actually enough to make it there, so you guys are able to, or rather, would be able to make it without any encounters. However, as you reach about a midway point, something starts to feel off, and I think, Lucille, you'd be the one to notice this most. Let me just reset this map. Uh, Lu specifically, Lucille's the one noticing it because of her staff. I knew this was a good investment. What do I notice? You just feel something off, and your quarterstaff is kind of quarterstaff is kind of buzzing a little bit. Hmm. I'm going to uh, pull it off of my back and examine it, and say. I think something's wrong. Ryla just uh, us pulls out out her her goon. Uh, uh. Raxan will stop, and then he holds out his shield. Mm -hmm. There is something strange happening. I'm gonna look around to see if I can see anything. Uh, your dark vision is, uh, was it 60 or 120? 120. Alright, you look around, uh, roll a perception check. 23. 23. Yeah, you, you catch glimpses of the slimy purple skin ahead of you, quite a few of them, but you also just barely catch a glimpse of one behind you. How far behind me? Uh, 120. I'm gonna look right at the, right, right at it and say, say to the group, there's something watching us. Can you point any direction? Uh, she, she's looking right at the one that's like behind her. Uh, central waves. I know I have, I have dark, dark vision, but I don't remember how far. I believe it's about it, 60. It, 
It should be 60 feet for some uh, peoples who are native to the Underdark. It's 120. Hence why Lucille's is greater. So Rylex would be 60. Yeah, it's 60. I found the no. There are quite a few strange creatures around us. Little Lucille, was it? You are able to see farther than me in this darkness. Do you have a read on any? Uh, when he says, when he asks, do you have a read on them? What does he mean by that? Uh, are, are, do, do you have like, are you able to see them and know where they are? Oh, yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I point them out. I try to be subtle about it. I may be able to take that small group alone. Well, that's not very fun. You all can take the one behind you. I look at Rylik and just, like, hold off my staff, just like, we fighting? Rylik, Rylik turn, turns around and walk, walks toward, towards where um, or Lucille was walk, was a staring, airing, airing prepping in her goon dog for a swing. Y'all hear me? I'm. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna follow Rylik. And as soon as the bugger comes in range, I'm just gonna charge and swing. Charge him and swing. Or comes in vision. Alright. You ready yourself, and I think you all ready yourselves as Vraxan strides forward. And at this point, Lucille, with your dark vision, you're kind of seeing that the one that was trying to stealth. Uh, sneak forward a little bit, a bit apprehensive, as if this was not the plan. As it starts there, and um, just when you all want to begin combat, just tell me as I'm going to sneak forward this one to see how, how, at what point you guys decide to engage it. Basically, there is. If you have like a battle map open, oh then crap! I'm I forgot to. A uh, frickin' roll 20, and you have to move the players tab thing. I always forget that. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay. Where are the things? I don't see their their icons. Like the enemies. Uh, oh, yeah. is this, this is that fucking thing? Yep. I thought that was the dragonborn. Um. Can I see what this thing looks like now? Yeah, it is. It's one of the things you've been fighting. Oh, it's a mo oh, okay. But it, it definitely has much more of a roguish posture. No more diplomacy then. Pop and rage. Age, um, dashing in. And, right. and overhand swing. Uh, I would say if you once you guys decide to engage, that's where we'll start initiative. Okay. Personally, uh, I'm engaging. Yeah. And when Rylik engages, I engage. Alright, that is a plus three on this thing's plus initiative. Three! I got a nat 17. one on my initiative. Oh, buddy! I got a 17. Right. Or my total is 17. Uh, right, what's my initiative? Okay, yeah, right. I got an eight. Uh, you have the lower initiative bonus. I got a three. So Rylek and Soul are tied. You all can choose your uh, Rylek, who, who goes your first there. Dexterity. Uh, uh, what's your dexterity? Twelve. Mine's fourteen. I'm not in, so it's higher. Yeah. I go before a soul. Alright. Uh, 
It's all set up. Time to start the combat music. This one. All right, beginning with Lucille. Okay, um... I'm gonna... Actually, wait. Hold on. I was right here. I want to get you behind him. You are one back, actually. Okay, I had... Okay, um, let me see here. 45 feet, so... I'd make it. I want to get behind him. I like go up this way and then around here yeah. to get behind him. So while like when it's her turn, she can flank the thing, and I'm just gonna smack. smack. Uh, something something you you notice about this one is that the ones you've previously been fighting have been uh you've thought they were more androgynous, but now seeing this one, you've realized that they're. All except the big one have been somewhat more masculine, while this one seems a little bit more feminine. But just, just slightly. And go in for your attacks. Sorry if I disrupted the flow there. <laughs> Amaya? Huh? Hello, hello? Am I heard? Hello? I think things might have, might have cut out on uh -huh. her end. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can hear you fine. I can't hear her. Hello? Hello. Okay, okay, I think it was on your end. Yeah, I know, I could fucking tell. Uh, hold on. Okay, so you cut off when you said something about how homeboy over here looks different? Yeah, you've noticed that you... The ones that you've been uh, fighting... I think the actor uh, term would be a home girl. Yeah, the the ones oh, that cool. you've been fighting Homeboy with the is a gender neutral term on vibes. Yeah, um, for for just a recap for Amaya, the ones that you've been fighting so far have been more. You've thought it was more androgynous. However, looking at this one, you've realized that they've been more masculine this whole time, and it's just there's a slight, um, slight kind of difference that these things are on the androgynous side, but there's something weird. Cool. I'm still gonna. I'm still gonna hit her. Um, with my new quarter staff, that is a dirty twenty. Yep. Uh, with two hands, because I've got the hands for it. Um, eleven. Eleven hits. Um, or, oh, 11 damage. My apologies. <laughs> yeah, 11 damage. A 25. 25 hits. That's a 1 for 6 damage. Alright. Uh, bonus action. And people say monks are bad. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll use a key point to, to, to whack it again. All right. Another dirty 20. Hits. Uh, for eight damage. And a second time, that's a natural one. So, yeah, that's it. All right. It now comes to the Mind Flayer's turn. As you do this, and then it raises up its hand, and you all see this blade of weird, kind of ethereal purple energy as it stabs back and tries to hit you with the psychic knife. Ooh. 
Does a, a nine, I take it, does not hit you. Nope. All right. That is, unfortunately, all it can do on its turn. That brings us to Setchel. Uh, Central is... Central's gonna cast Levitate on this creature. It needs to make a... It needs to make a, a DC... A, D, a con 16, or it's gonna be just floating 5 feet off the ground. Alright. That is an 11, so it... It misses, and it's floating five feet off the ground, still in range for Rylek to attack. Speaking of which, we come to the combined turn of Rylek and Soul. However you guys want to handle who goes first. Rylek will go first because he has the highest stat. Dexterity. Uh, I'm gonna step- Rylek's gonna step forward and just- like I said, take an overhand swing thing with her goon dog. Alright, roll to hit. <laughs> That'll hit. Uh, no. and it's max on the die and then a normal damage roll. Because we're using Perkins crit. So, eight. Um... You're using it two-handed, so 18 total. Yeah, 18 total. All right. Soul. Hold uh, on, that wasn't that. that oh. wasn't. Oh right, yep. Sorry. Attack. Sorry. <laughs> There's just a long enough pause. My bad. <laughs> I forgot I'm on push to talk. But my, I, also, my bad. I do apologize. <laughs> I'm gonna make. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wrench edge it out and then do, do a thrust with the tip of the goon dog. All right. That hits. Nineteen. This one's also going to be two-handed. Alright. Seven toe. Alright. And that will be all. And that leaves us at Soul's turn. Soul is going to... wait for one of the others to get hurt as she prepares healing wood uh, a healing word all right so holding your action yeah holding action and whoever gets injured first will receive it all right lose seal okay um oh god am i able to like reach it like broom handle style smacking at a bug yeah yeah okay um, I'm gonna do that. Uh, quarter staff. 14? 14 will just barely miss as you thrust up and you hit a little stud on the armor of this creature. I'm gonna hit it. Oh, hmm? reroll. Ooh, okay. 24. That hits! Yes! Nine damage. All right. I'm gonna do it again. For 22. That hits. Mm. Ooh, full damage, 13. All right. And, uh... Yeah, that's it. All right. 
on this creature's turn. It is floating up in the air. <laughs> Surprise! It looks at Sechel, and even though it is going to be at disadvantage with this attack, it must try and escape. I'll be right back. Uh, uh, 16, does that hit Sechel? I'm sorry, I could not understand you, if you responded. Uh, yes, it does. Alright, that is 12 damage, 5 of it, or, oh no, uh, just 5 psychic. Okay, and that's a con save, right? Yes. And I forgot to read this thing's stat sheet, it actually gets 2 psychic knife attacks. Back with a milkshake. Ten just makes it right. Yep. Alright. Um. Then gonna try again, because it does not like being held up in the air against its will. Fifteen to hit. That hits. Another five. on the save. Alright. They then it is uh Setchel's turn again. So just to double check you didn't take any damage, right? It was uh took damage but the levitate is still up, which is screwing the creature over a lot right now. Uh no I meant like did uh, any of my party members take damage. Oh Setchel took damage. Yeah. I wanted to double check because I thought I heard that, but because yeah. that was my prepared action and all that, so. So, Satchel heals nine. <laughs> Which almost completely covers it. <laughs> oh, thanks. And it is now your turn, Satchel. Thank you. Uh as a reminder, uh, dispelling a spell is a free action, right? Yeah. Okay, hang on. Uh, I, I call over to Ryan, like, should we let this one down? Rylek doesn't even. Rylek is too busy seething at the bee. At, at the mind flayer. Or to, the bee. Like, your satchel. The mind bee now. Uh, Lucy, can you say that again? Which one of Which us? Which one? Lucille. Oh, I just. I just called. Because of um, the, the stutter earlier, I was just like, it's a mind bee now. I said. I almost said beast. I mean, if the shoe fits. <laughs> okay, um... Can I reach the mind flare? If I get it one step closer? You could. Can I try and grab the, the mind flare's foot and, like, spin it in place? You can certainly try. <laughs> I would say, uh, ju just a strength check. <laughs> probably gonna, probably gonna take a swipe at ya. I have, can I use a lucky to reroll that? Yes, you may. Does a 17 do it? Yep. <laughs> The Vine Flayer is now levitating and spinning in place. That's my turn. Alright, Rylock. Rylock's gonna grab Abbott at this point and just drag it and, and just slam it to the ground. Alright, uh. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd count that as good in dog level damage. <laughs> so roll the head? Yeah. Head for good and dog? Roll the head with the goon dog? Yep. You try to reach out, and because of the spinning motion, you reach, and then it's already out of the way by the time you grab for it. You do get a second attack, though. I'm doing it. Alright. Total of 16. Barely hits. So grab and just slam down! This is a one-handed slam for reference. Alright, so uh, I'll go with the first gun and do 6 plus 2 is... Oh! Oh, it already told it. So, 8. And do you have anything else you want to do on your turn? No. Alright. Sold. Uh... I... Soul would kind of move a bit forward, still be in range of everyone, and then I guess... Yeah, do another prepa uh, prepared heal. All right, Lucille. I'm gonna watch this thing spin for a second. Uh, right, right now it's on the the ground, having been slammed oh. down by Rylek. Oh, okay. Um, is it prone? Yeah. I'm gonna hit it with my quarterstaff, just overhead, just like whack. All right. If it's not prone, I'd like to uh, meet its personal trainer. Um. It's since it's prone, I have advantage, right? Yep. Ooh. All right, you guys have advantage this whole time because flanking. Although I guess since it was, I guess since it was in the air, it gets weird. Eh. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a twenty-six. That hits. Eight damage. Doing it again. A good compromise might be to try and figure out some like partial advantage stuff. You know, that way. Yeah. Mm. That way, there's levels of advantage. That's that way, it's, you know, just yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we don't even need to give advantage. We could just give like a bonus. Yeah. Um, that's a twenty-four it's... for my second hit. For eleven damage. All right. Um. Oh, I could- I, I fucking knew it! I could make an unarmed strike as a bonus action. Yeah, you, you can always uh, make one as a bonus action, or you could spend uh, a key point to make two. I'm so- I, I'm sorry, guys. It's been a week. Um, a long week. Um, Pretty sure it's- yeah. Was it 14? 14 just barely misses. That's okay. That's fine. Uh, that's my turn. Alright this creature's turn, it will spend half of its movement getting up, and then it takes disengage action. <laughs> Five, Rylic, ten... Rylic's reaching out to grab this thing as soon as it, it steps out. <laughs> uh, disengage action means no attacks of opportunity. Oh, fuck. But it does take the full action. And that is where it goes. That leads to Setchel's turn. Can I assume my spell is dispelled? Uh, I would say, because of the nature of it, you weren't the one that chose to land it, you can still let, you still have the spell up. Okay. I'm go I can- I'm allowed to, uh, move the character up 20 feet. Whoop! Flies up 20 feet. As a free action, I will drop him, and I'll dispel the, the spell and drop him. Alright, uh, that would be 2d6 falling damage? Yep. Four. And falls prone. Alright. Uh, are you doing anything else? 
Yep. Alright, that leads to Rylak and Soul. You already know what's about to happen. Yep. <laughs> Golden Dog Thug Over, Spike Down. Alright. Somehow it misses. You drive the spike down, but it hits one of the studs and deflects your... And just the, the amount of deflection wrenches your wrists, and you don't get the purchase you want. Okay, I'm just gonna stomp on her now. Alright. I roll worse! You, you try to stomp, and it shuffles out of the- it, it turns out of the way as your foot comes down. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna be able to do at this point. Alright, so I, uh, I'm assuming same thing, holding bonus at- holding a uh, healing word. Yep. Slightly moving a bit closer to ensure she can is in range of everyone, you know. But yeah. All right, Lucille. Uh, I'm gonna. Is it possible to like run up to this thing and and jump on top of it? Yes, it is. Okay, I would like to do that. All right, you and do that. So I get up close and personal and just like, uh, with the staff, it's twenty-five. Twenty-five hits. Is she prone? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, well, the first one hit anyway, so that's fine. Uh, that's 10 damage for the first hit. 10 damage is enough to defeat the creature. Oh! How do you want to do this? Um... I am going to, like... With... I'm going to sprint over to this thing. And not even like leap on top, not even like land on her. I'm just gonna like leap over her and like do like a corkscrew spin and just like strike the side of her head with my staff. And when I land, she's dead. All right. You know what I mean? Like, d does that make sense? Yeah, perfect sense. Yes. Congratulations. You, and then you all look over to the further down the road to see Vraxan facing down two of these creatures as he lops off both of their heads with one strike, obviously having weakened them throughout the process. She claps. Lucio claps. <sighs> they were not so strong. Obviously here to try and ambush us. Yeah. That staff is a good asset, Lucille. And you all did commendable work. Slides his axe back into, uh, back onto his side. I'll let you all rest, and then we can continue on when you're ready. Honestly, I'm good. Rylak just silently begins to move in the direction they were traveling before this ambush happened. All right. Yeah. Is there anything? <laughs> Uh, on the creature, there is a set of studded leather, but nothing else. Studded yeah, leather armor. Alright. And with that, you all are proceed able to proceed over to the underground lake, where this creature known as Ivan remains. It's uh, a... Oh! I'm You're... kind of fast with moving, so we'll kind of speak up a bit. Uh, so, what... What was those things? Let's just say... Let's just say they... Hey, they ain't pleasant. They eat... Well, not people. They eat brains. Uh... Okay. She says with, like, a very confused look on her face, you know? It's not pleasant. We should have gotten you a helmet. Uh, I mean, this cloak kind of is decent enough, I guess. Do you stay away, stay out of reach of them? I think it'll be okay. Plus, you have us, and she like pats your back. Uh, 
Oh, right. And also, as you kind of pat her back, her, she feels a bit... I, what would be the word? It tougher than what you... than what her frame looks to be, you know? Like, she seems more sturdier. Sturdy oh. than you probably expected. Ooh, okay. Lucille makes note of that, but says nothing. Alright. Are there any other uh, RP opportunities anyone wants to take through this time? Sean told us what how long he's how long they've been fighting these mind flayer things. Um are are you asking Therastra or Vraxon? Vrax Vrax Vraxon. Well they've been here Probably a few months, if I were to hazard a guess. Uh, m we've only experienced them since I left about two months ago. Hmm. So we've been contesting with these creatures for about three months, From what, but from what I understand from Therastra, the problem has existed for... Uh, <sighs> Probably three more than that. Um. Yeah, that's all she's. That's all she wanted to ask. So. All right. Can I hold RP for when we get to the lake? Yeah, of course. I'm gonna shove Satchel in the lake. All right. Yeah. So you all eventually reach this area where those of you with far enough dark vision can see the underground lake in the distance and Vrax and I'm like suddenly shoves of Satchel actually. Uh, the, the lake's yeah. like 60 feet out at this point. Oh. Yeah. And That's right. yeah. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, Vrax I need to when we see the lake, can I see can I look at Riley like to see if I can tell what she's planning as soon as she sees it? Yeah. Yeah. Um she, Lucy's Luce, a little shit. She's just gonna smile and like nudge Rylek and be like, watch this. And she, when they get closer to the lake, she's gonna um, trot up to it and lean down and like get, and like just get a drink of water. And she's just gonna glance at Rylek. He's like, like all of you guys are thirsty. There's some, we should drink some shit like that. Uh, Lu Lucille, you start to drink the water, um, and it is kind of stale. Uh. <laughs> it it doesn't taste it doesn't taste like it's gross or anything, but it does taste kind of stale. She takes a few sips and then she kind of like sticks her tongue out at the taste. Like, uh, I think I might get tapeworm. <laughs> well, since we're here, uh. Our, des our final destination is just that cave over in that direction, and you, if you follow where Vrax Vraxan is pointing to, you will see a a small cave just beside the lake with what look like a few glowing mushrooms outside. Hmm. Does Satchel approach the cave at any point? Uh, the cave, the lake side at any point. I think Satchel's been like rambling about, about random anything as they're just like watching, walking dangerously close to the edge of the lake. Okay. Rylek takes, Rylek, I like, I like sneaks close and then when she's close enough, she just uh, suddenly shoves, shoves him off to the side into the lake. <laughs> I have a question. Yes? The Satchel Satan Corlote. Uh, I I think it depends on what Satchel wants to do at the moment. They could float, they could sink. What he what they can just choose to be more or less corpse like. Yep. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a D two. Uh, 
Satchel floats face first in the water for a good minute. Lucy stares at Satchel floating like a dead body and just be like, does Satchel know how to swim? Rylax like shrugs and just moves towards the cave. What? I want to see anything in the water. Ah, uh, not really. I'm gonna wade into the water and drag Satchel out. All right. Uh, Va Vaxod is just kind of standing off on the road, looking his best to be patient. Um, but anyone with a uh, does anyone have an in a passive insight of eighteen or above? Oh no. no. Okay, so to uh, you all, he just looks like he's patiently waiting. Uh, so were you about to say something? I tried to figure out if she would have that because I don't remember what insight. Is insight no, is based okay. on wisdom. Okay, yeah, then, wisdom. No. yeah. Then, uh, no, she wouldn't. Are we all ready to proceed? I give a oh, thumbs wow. up as I just like drag Central's body the rest of the way off, off out of the water. All right. So Vax yeah, and will walk in the direction of the cave, and as you all, if you all decide to follow him. Uh, as you approach, as you approach the mushrooms, some weird shapes start to flitter out. They look kind of like jellyfish with eye stalks above them as they flutter out. And Vraxam will say, "Greetings." Hello. Oh my God. We are here to see the your guardian, I believe. Okay, we get them. And then it just, one of them floats off into the cave. These, these creatures are another curiosity. Uh, one of the only creatures we've known from the Out Realms that isn't hostile. In fact, they are quite benevolent. However, unfortunately, we've, we've only seen them in this grove. What is- what are they? We are flumps! I fucking knew it! Oh my god! Um, how big are they? They're about, I would say, like, uh, a platter size of diameter. I want to hold a hand out to see if they'll just, like, sit on me. You do that, and when floats over to you, swimming like a jellyfish does, but through the air, and it looks you over for a moment, and just plops into your hand. She just slowly turns to the others, her eyes like fucking stars, and she's like, this is... You cut out at the end there? Oh, uh, she whispers, she just like, whispers, shouts, this is awesome! We are creatures that feed of the psychic energy of evil. She looks a little less stoked and just like, are you going to eat us? <laughs> Narrows its eyes. <laughs> no, you are good. We would not be able to feed off of you. I fucking love them. You say that, how many flow over to Satchel? Uh, what is Satchel's alignment? I always lean like some like, probably chaotic evil. Yeah, um, <laughs> that one says that, and then, like, quite a few start to gather around Satchel, and you notice that they're they're not talking to each other, but they seem to be reacting to each other, and they just gather around Setchel. Well, that's not concerning. I look over to Roxanne and point at the cloud. Can I eat one? I would Rylek, rather... Rylek take, Rylek take 
Accessual by the collar and tosses him back in the river. I would not consume a creature from the Out Realms. Their biology is much different than ours. Eventually, the. This, but... Sorry, you, you say what you were going to say. <laughs> you only hear, like, bubble, bubbles from the lake, but Seth was saying, okay. The, the flump that went into the cave ca comes out. Ivan will see you soon. It must prepare itself. And uh, it takes about uh, about like three minutes before coming out of the cave, floating through the air unnaturally, you see a five and a half foot sphere shaded a purplish blue color on top that fades into pinkish on the bottom pebbled skin with a enormous eye in the center of its head which is its body like a cyclops head detached with nine segmented insectile eye stalks on top a large mouth with thin and pointed teeth smiling as it meets you oh my fucking god hello i do so love visitors how could I help you all today? What is it you are here for? I'm gonna very slowly edge behind Rakshan. So, so honestly, it would join you a bit if uh, she just tries to, I guess, fade into the background is the best way to put it. Rylik <laughs> steps, Rylik inserts herself between Saul and whatever the fuck just came out of this game. Same calling itself Ivan. Do glow? Uh, the fl the flumps have a slight glow to them, yes. Okay, it, that'd be so funny because if in complete darkness Lucy tries to hide, but then their flumps are still glowing because they're sitting on her. Vraxan will just stand there stoically. Greetings, Ivan. We've come to ask you about information of strange creatures which we are dealing with. Oh, I will help as I can, but I'm afraid I might not know much depending on their origins. Tell me, which realm do they hail from? They hail from the Out Realms, like your kind and these creatures. Ivan will... its expression hardens a little bit. Well, you know that I am not the most foremost expert in that, but I will help as I can. Come, come in, everyone. I, I don't need it myself, but I do have a table that I can, that I can have set for you all. As the giant floating head floats back into the cave, uh, I will say you all notice that it has nine eye stalks, but they seem. A little bit uneven, like it should have one more. Huh. I have a religious question. Yes? Uh, Rick Rick Solon said this thing's from the Out Realms, like, over fighting. Mm -hmm. Um, would, would my belief have pred predications against this thing? You can roll a religion check to see. Nothing off the top of your head that you know, but you're if, if you want to know for sure you can comb your comb your head for it. Comb your mind. Twenty three? Twenty three. Yeah, there there's nothing too much against it. Uh the you kinda of flash back to the reason why your religion is so adverse to the mind flayers being that they steal the flesh, steal the body. And you're kind of, you, you don't remember hearing anything about this creature. I will also say, um, for everyone who remembers, this creature bears a very striking similarity to the giant one-eyed skull that uh, was in Belite Immorel's uh, laboratory. Oh boy. It, that, that skull was a different shape. But given the size and the one eye, you're like, could that couldn't have been anything other than whatever species this is. 
do I know, or at least like whether or not it was like an encounter in person or just like stories, do I know what this thing is? You can roll a, uh, if you, you could try a history check if you want, that would be combing all stories in general, but if you just want to tie it to what Lucy may have heard from her companions, that would just be straight intelligence. It's not good either way. It's plus zero. Uh... Okay, I'm gonna roll history. Four! Four. You have no idea. Put the flump I'm carrying on my head and just whisper to it, What, is he nice? Very nice. Do I have... Have I heard anything? Uh, with a 17. You have heard vague myths about strange ten-eyed creatures, but you thought that it was just a myth given how old the stories are and how even infrequent they are? Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Braxan will just head into the cave. I'll follow. Riley, Riley can be heard in the rain. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I think you muttered- I'm sorry, Riley can and, and be heard muttering, what are they freaking called? As if trying to recall the tale, pulls word for word, or that she's heard. All right. Follow, and just to make sure, it's been a hack since that last encounter, right? Uh, yes. Okay. By the way, I'm. By the way, just so I'm, us to clarify now. Anytime Sexual does something stupid and he's in arms reach, he's a Rylak. I'm tossing him in the water. All right. <laughs> if there's water, water nearby, this however. There's what? Uh, water. There is no water in the the cave itself. As you enter the cave, you see what was like. It definitely resembles a like. A, pr a living room, but you would all be used to a living room looking like. But, like, it was heard secondhand and everything's carved from stone. And you can also see, like, some tunnels near the top and going down that make you think that this was refurbished to look like this. <laughs> I... I do apologize, I would not be able to provide you with any sustenance or refreshments after all my own biology is not the same as yours. And they kind of gesture with their eye stalks as if they were hands, but it just kind of reinforces the what they're trying to say, what it's trying to say. <laughs> Rylek just nods. Uh, so, you tell me that you are looking to... for information about creatures from the Outrealms. Rylik at this point, like, bursts out in both astonishment and impatience. You know anything about these squid-faced beings? Hmm. I could... <sighs> that is difficult to say. I was... my kind is very strange compared to yours. We are born out of dreams, uh, rather than any physical act. Uh, and I was created here, whilst uh, I will plumb my mind to see if my predecessor had any knowledge of it. Pred uh, yes, I, my predecessor was from the Out Realms, where I was created here by one of their dreams. Uh, it is normal, apparently normal for my kind to fight amongst each other, but I, uh, I've not been the fighting sort, to be honest. 
Lucy thinks to herself, like, like, just like, you can read your dad's memories? It's just like, like, oh, that's your parents. Hmm. If these creatures, they call themselves illithids, they are a psionic, a psionic hive mind, I believe you would call it, uh, and they sustain themselves off of brains and psionic energy. Um, I, I can see what more information I can gather. Uh, but in in the meantime, you all must be must be weary from your adventure. Come, sit, enjoy yourselves. Rylek is staying right by the door. I'm gonna sit down on the nearest chair to like the exit. Right. And is this is this mind flip mind player the holder gonna? Is this my, is this is this guy like gonna be occupied with probing his memories? Yeah. Okay. Is the eye tyrant gonna be in deep contemplation? Yep. I'm going to pluck the flump off of my head and ask, "Have you met one of these illithid before?" No. We know nothing of these strange squid people. Love them so much, but I just want to check real quick if it is being deceitful, or I... if it's even capable of being deceitful. You may roll insight. That's a natural one. It seems honest. She's gonna squint at it for a while and then put it back on her head and be like, "Okay." <laughs> it is strange. I am not used to absorbing the psionic energy of a creature that. Uh, what, what is, uh, Lucia's alignment? I was assuming it was good because of her disposition, but I just want to double check. <laughs> oh, it's so funny because when I first made her, she was lawful neutral. But now I'm thinking she's like a chaotic good kind of thing or something. Yeah. yeah. I have not fed off the energies of a creature as caring as you. It oh. is interesting. Mm. Is it good? It is... Enjoyable, but without sustenance. If you feed off of something enough, do you kill it? No. I just realized I might have a couple of these things floating around me, because I'm lawful evil. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, a few, a few of them are gathering around Rylik as well. Soul, do you have any hidden evil in your alignment? <laughs> that is... I that is actually a good question because Soul's alignment is neutral good, but that doesn't mean her thoughts alone are always neutral good. Yeah. So it so it could easily and all that. So I um I, I would go with probably not too many, but just like that's because she just kind of is. I don't know what's going on. My brain's turning off. Is that light enough that a bunch of these been hearing them? Uh, I'm- I'm- I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Sorry. Is sexual light enough that a bunch of these can carry them? Uh... <laughs> I would say you're a bit too heavy for that. Uh, you wanna tie them up and ride them like the balloons from up or something? I just... I just imagined... Sexual tea posing and all these flumps floating and carry them away. <laughs> Rylex's just, Rylex just standing where she is, stewing in her thoughts, not even minding the flumps occasionally floating past her vision. Sean doing? Yeah, sorry. Uh, how much longer do we got here? Um, I, I was thinking to pick up whenever you guys are good. Um, probably like 20 more minutes, probably, but whenever you guys are good on calling it, we can call it.
Wait, for the session or the character come back? Uh, the session. I do have one new character question for probably the seal. All right. Ooh. So like, I walk over and look at Lucille and say, I have a question. Yes. And she's like in the middle of like squishing this flump. Not in a, like a harmful way, just like, like how much give does this thing have? Just like bouncing in. She's just like, yes. <laughs> what are dreams? She stops bouncing the flump. Right, like, Rylik's head whips around. I'm get. I'm looking at Sechel. Oh, like he's a fucking idiot. Do you? It's. Do you not dream? Well, what do you need to dream? Mm, well, my. F Hold on. I'm trying to figure out what, what the fucking. Okay. Well, my friend Ranielle told me dreams. Well, the first they happen when you sleep. Do you sleep? Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> no, I don't sleep. Okay. I like, I like face palms just like I did IRL. Uh, she, uh, Lucille's face kind of like blanks out for a second. Like she's still smiling, but she's just like this. I have, I both, I both have so many questions that are also being answered right now. But anyway, um, this brings up as many questions as answers, and all those answers are for those questions that are coming up. Yeah, uh, I have so many questions and answers, but not to those questions. Anyway, um, she says, "Well, dreams are." Ranielle said, "Dreams are." Hold on. I'm trying not to sound all scientific about it, but... Dreams are a gateway to the soul, like uh, some people describe it. They're also... A way a... to... You first. You a first. way to... Kind of leave what you really are behind and just have a moment of whatever goes through your head. While you head while sleeping. There are also messages sometimes. Rylik just nods and gives a begrudging mutter of agreement. There's words and messages. It goes like messages, huh? Hmm. And I think like they just like suddenly just walk off towards Lake. I like crane my head to watch them go and be like, where are you going? Considering, considering who it is, considering who you're talking about and in the context, I'm willing to bet he's going to try and take him back. Is there a bed in this room? Or at least a big chair? There is not. Or like a big chair. Uh, there, there is just the the table set and like chairs that are carved out of the rock, so they are still like connected to the floor. And also, set Etchel doesn't sleep, doesn't really use furniture to rest. Have an idea. What does sleep feel like? Does it look like? Uh, are, is, is that an in-character such you're asking? Just for my yeah. clarification. Yeah. Okay. Set. Rylik, Rylik grabs her goon dog and whips around um, with intent to knock Oxetchel out. Wow. Uh, Mir, I, I think I have a good way to, to handle this with how Setchel is the way they are, if you don't mind me taking over the narration of that. Hello? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. So, right, like, you do that, you smack Setchel upside the head. However, uh, since Setchel's HP is able to take the hit, Setchel isn't knocked out. Their head is just, like, knocked to the side as if their neck was broken, and then it just goes right back into place. 
Well, I tried. <laughs> can... Can Rylic knock me into the water? If you want, yes. Uh, well, could that blow have done it in your opinion? No, the blow could have done it. Like, yeah, if if, such, if, if Rylic knocks Setchel out, then yeah, Setchel is out. Uh, I'd say, well, DM just said, and your health is to where you can take it. Right, 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 right. Although, I wasn't exactly holding back on that blow either. You know what? If that's the case, then when Stetchel's neck goes back in place, it says, um, I, I didn't really get any answer. I tried. They say what? He didn't I didn't really exactly get, an get an answer. Hmm. At this so, point, Riley just, just walks us further into the cave. A grave mu muttering growls in Infernal. So Naki, this Lucille is just like watching all this back and forth. She watches Riley walk away and just like, so Naki, you had didn't work, huh? Satchel? Uh, oh. I, I, I think uh, they look at you as like, I have no idea what they were trying. And I think they're just gonna walk away. Alright. Maybe uh, after, I'll show you what sleeping is. Okay. Uh, no, sorry. I keep cutting people off. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, if, if everyone's fine, I do have something else planned for the session. However, some people have mentioned that they're not feeling top of their game, so I'd rather handle that next session if everyone's okay with it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right. Um, actually, regarding me, I think this session has actually put me in a pretty good place at this point. All right. I, 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 I I'm still uh, mentally like in wind down mode, so I think we will call it a shorter session today and then start yeah, well, next session with what we yeah, were handling. I'm fine with ending it early though. All right, so thank you, everyone who showed up. Thank you, players. Can do this without you. Thank you, DM, for running this game. And thank you for tolerating me turning this into a circus act. <laughs> hey, you you just made it fun. I, I, I rarely play comedic, even NPCs, so I do appreciate when players are able to make their own humor. Because it's just not in my brain to play comical characters. <laughs> If you want a real comical character, then you and I are going to have to have that talk after all. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, everyone. Uh, stream's ending here. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh